Good evening, everyone. Good morning, good evening. So today's story has been on my lips for a long while. And it's a story of a woman of strength. Her name is Zipporah. Zipporah means a bird. And it's mentioned in the book of Exodus as the wife of Moses and the daughter of Ruel or Jethro, the priest of the Prince of Midian. A few days ago, we did Keturah. Keturah was the mother of the Midianites because her son Midian is where the Midianites came from. So there was a linkage, as you could see. She was the, Keturah was Abraham's, sorry other wife concubine. In the book of Chronicles, two of her, her grandsons were named Shebuel, son of Gershon, and Rehabia, a son of Elysia. So what's a background to her story? In the book of Exodus, Zipporah was one of the seven daughters of Jethro, a Kenite, a shepherd who was a priest of Midian. In Exodus, Jethro is also referred to as Ruel, and in the book of Judges, as Hobab. He also has a son by the name of Obab. So Moses marries Zipporah. So when the Israelites were captive in Egypt, Moses, remember, killed the Egyptian who was striking the Hebrew. And one of Pharaoh's, which offends Sarah, and they sought to kill Pharaoh, and they sought to kill him. Moses, therefore, fled from Egypt and arrived in Midian. One day, while he sat by a well, Ruel's daughters came by to water their father's flock. Other shepherds arrived and drove the girls away chauvinistic, misogynist, so that they could bought their own flock first. So Moses defended the girls and watered their flock. Upon their, upon their return home, their father asked them, how is it that you've come back so early today? I mean, every single day, the guys would drove the girls away huh? and watered their flock first. Can you imagine? So the girl answered, an Egyptian, an Egyptian rescued us from the shepherds. He even drew water for us and watered the flock. Where is he then? Said Ruel Axton. Why did you leave the man? Invite him for supper, for bread. Ruel then gave Moses Zipporah as his wife. So, Zipporah. After God commanded Moses to return to Egypt to free the Israelite, Moses took to his wife took with him his wife and sons and started on their journey. On the road home, they stayed in an inn where God came to kill Moses. And all. there are several scenarios about the story. Zipporah quickly circumcised her son with a sharp stone and touched Moses' feet and says, with, his, with the foreskin and said, surely you're a husband, of, a bloody husband to me, a husband of blood to me. So God then left Moses and didn't bother to kill him. Can you imagine Moses refused to circumcise his son according to God's dictate? But somehow his wife understood and did it. After Moses succeeded in leading the Israelites out of Egypt and won a battle against Amalek, Ruel came to the Hebrew camp in the wilderness of Sinai, bringing with him Zipporah and her two sons, Gershom and Eliezer. The Bible does not say when Zipporah and her sons rejoined Royal or Jethro, one after, only after he had heard of what God did that the Israelites he brought them. But if you remember, there was some storm in the camp too. So Moses, the most common translation is that Moses sent her away, but another grammatically permissible translation is that she, she sent things or persons, or perhaps the an announcement of a victory over Malek. So the word that makes this difficult is shelushia, the sending away of her. So there's a lot of story, and we're not going to focus on why Moses sent her away, or was it because, but if you remember, Moses' wife is referred to as a Cushite woman in Numbers. So there are not a lot of other story. Some people say that it could have been another wife he had. Some people say... They were from the Kushite, which were they were Ethiopians, if they were Kushite. But she was a beautiful woman, but she was dark pigmented. Yeah. Interpretations differ on whether the Kushite woman was one and the same of Zipporah, as I said, or another woman, and whether he was married. But if you 
look back into some history, the Midianites also were linked towards um the Kushak being to the to the Kushaks. Okay, but there are a lot of stories about it. Whatever you decide you want to take, it's up to you. So let's get back to Zipporah. So some say it was another person. So in the story, Aaron and Miriam criticized Moses' marriage to a Kushite woman. The criticism displeased God, who pushed Miriam, who punishes Miriam, and often lost as leprosy. So she became a leper, it was said. So the Kushites were of the ancestor of Kush, K-U-S-H, and some say they were from Northeast Africa or Arabians. So they were two sets of people from that tribe. The sons of Ham mentioned in the book of Genesis have been identified with the nations in Africa, Ethiopia, Egypt, and Libya. So those are the areas of the Kushites, the Levant, Canaan, and the Arabia. But the Midianites themselves were later depicted at times in non-biblical sources as dark-skinned and called Cushing which is similar to Kush, K-U-S-H, which were the ancestors of the Kushites. So you see the link that I'm talking about, okay? So the Midianites themselves were later depicted as Kushims, and Kushim means that they were dark-skinned. Now, the Hebrew word used for dark-skinned African is the Kushim, right? So one interpretation is that the wife, Zipporah, and that she was referred to as a Kushite, though she was a Midianite because of her beauty and her skin. So the Samaritan Pentateuch referred to Moses' wife, Zipporah, as Kashet, which translates a beautiful woman. So rather than the Kushit, which is a black woman or a Kushite woman, but the Kushite woman becomes in the Greek Septuagint. And so there are different stories about who this Zipporah was. Well, the important thing about Zipporah was Zipporah's father was a spiritual leader. He was said to be the founder of a chief prophet of the ancestors of the Jews. And Moses was allowed to win Zipporah after helping save Jethro's daughters and their flock from competing men. Jethro had a lot of wisdom in him. If you remember, when he brought Moses' wife back to him, right? If you also remember that Jethro, when Moses was having problems in deciding, and when he was overworking himself, it was Jethro who said to him, Moses, you can't keep doing this stupidness. You need to appoint elders over the people as you're going to ruin yourself. And Moses listened to his father-in-law. So. Let us also remember that, yes, they had maybe mixed worship and religion, but the Midianites were Abraham descendants also. So here is Zipporah, a woman from the outer tribe, coming in and saving and rescuing Moses, the man who was supposed to be connected and knew more about the circumcision than to the Deborah. There has been a lot of females in the Bible who have rescued the lineage. Rescued the lineage. We talk about Tamar. Judah walked away from the line. We, we find ourselves with Ruth, the Moabites, and we have Rahab. Boaz came from Rahab lineage. So in this grand picture are some women who are considered outcasts. And I'm so grateful that we have a God who specializes in outcasts, a God who doesn't care about the norms of society, a God who's not disturbed by what society says, but a God who loves us beyond who we are, our accomplishment, and what other people think of us. So wherever you are in your walk with God, I just want to remind you, that God specializes in using people who are obedient. Not people who take the box, walk the walk, talk the talk, but people who have a heart of following after him. Dear Heavenly Father, we just want to come to you, Lord, and we just want to surrender ourselves and our all to you, Lord. Father, we haven't always been right with you, God, but we recognize that you specialize in 
the riffraff of society. You specialize in those who have been abandoned and been left to suffer, Lord. So God, we come to you, God, and we just want to surrender ourselves to you and we ask you to have your way and to give us deeper understanding and insight, Lord. Help us to reflect you, Lord. I place our ailments, our lives before you, Lord. And I ask you to have mercy in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless, bless. Have a blessed day. Remember, God specializes in the underdog, so to speak. God specializes in the outcasts. God specializes in those who society laughed at and looked down at and see no purpose in. God doesn't care who he uses. He's looking for people who are obedient, who want sin and knocks for him. Bless, bless.